Hello, Grade Sevens. Helen here, and that means it's time for your natural sciences lesson. What we're going to be focusing on today is potential energy. So, in our last lesson, we made it clear that there were two big main different types of energy potential energy and kinetic energy. And we established that potential energy is stored energy. The system has the potential or the ability to make something happen or to change something. Like you have the potential to be a great person. All right, so maybe you're not quite there yet. You've got to iron out some problems and then you will be great. Potential energy has the potential, the possibility of making something happen. Kinetic energy is the energy that an object or a system has because it is moving. Okay, so we gave the example last time about this compressed spring that has potential energy. And when we release the spring, the spring hits against the box and makes the box move. And while the box is moving, it has kinetic energy. And what has happened, no magic took place. One kind of energy didn't become a new kind of energy. It was simply transferred from one situation, from the situation of being stored in that spring to the situation of it moving in the box. Now, we're going to look at potential energy in a lot more detail. So let's start exploring the things that affect potential energy. So we're going to be exploring compressed springs and other things. So let's start with the example that we're familiar with. We've got an apparatus here where we can push this box against the spring, compressing it, meaning squashing that spring up. And then we can release the spring and we can see how it shoots the box forward. Here we've got potential energy. Here with the box we have got kinetic energy. Now let's start exploring this idea of potential energy. How can we give the box more potential energy? In other words, how can we increase the potential energy? And what effect will increasing the potential energy have on the kinetic energy? Let's have a look at the answers to some questions. If we compress the spring back further, pull that spring really tight, 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 will this make the box move further? If we pull that spring back even more, Will we be able to shoot the box maybe right off the edge of the bench? Think about it. Yes, it will make that box move further. So what we can derive from that, or what does this tell us about potential energy? If we increase our potential energy, so let's put it into words, increase potential energy, what is this going to do for our kinetic energy? Is it going to increase it? Is it going to decrease it? Is it going to keep it the same? Well, we know that the spring will actually shoot that box further if we've compressed the spring more. So an increase in the potential energy is going to result in an increase in the kinetic energy as well. So exactly the same transfer of energy is going to happen, but there's going to be more of it. So are we learning that we can actually change the potential energy of something and we can cause a change in the kinetic energy that will happen after that energy transfer has taken place. How else? Can we make things change slightly? If we make this box lighter or 
let's talk in good science language, if we decrease the mass of the box, will that box move further or not as far? Right? Will it move a further or a lesser distance? Well, if we pull back the spring, we've got our potential energy, and now we've got a lighter box, it's going to that spring, when it's released, is going to really shoot that box off the edge of the bench. So if we make the box lighter or decrease the mass of the box, it will make the box move a further distance, not a lesser distance. And what does this tell us about potential energy? Well, it's linked to the kinetic energy that is going to be uh, the result of the, uh, the uh, blah, getting my tongue mixed up. It's going to be the result. The kinetic energy is the result of that potential energy. It's the same potential energy, the same spring, the same distance that it's pulled back, but the box is moving further, not because we gave it more potential energy, but because we decreased the mass of what was moving. So, same potential energy, but we have less mass equals more kinetic energy. So, we've got the system here where we can either change the potential energy or we can change the mass of the object and we can change the kinetic energy as well. What eventually happens to the box after it has been pushed by the spring? So we need to understand, we take back our spring, it's got the potential energy, we let the spring go, and the box moves, the box moves, and then the box comes to a standstill, right? So it stops moving. What has happened? Why does it stop moving? And what does this tell us about potential energy? Well, what it tells us is that once the potential energy has been transferred, that amount of potential energy will cause a certain amount of kinetic energy and no more because we've got a force that is acting in an opposite direction to the potential energy, and that is the force of friction. So as the box is moving, it is slowing down because it's got friction, the surface of the box is acting against the surface of the bench and friction slows the box down. Now I want you to experience friction for me and I want you to hold up your hands and then I want you to rub them together. Rub them together quite hard, right? And what is happening to your hands as they're rubbing together? Well, you are using kinetic energy to move your hands, but they're moving against the surface of the other hand. And they're starting to become a little bit warm. Can you feel that? What we see here is that the friction of the surface that the box is moving against causes some of this energy to be transferred to heat energy, which in terms of our little system is wasted. And when we don't have that energy any longer, the friction has overcome that potential energy and the box stops moving. So we've explored how we can compress a spring to give it more potential energy or we can decrease the mass of the box to give us more kinetic energy, or if we somehow lubricated, put cream or soap down on the bench, we would decrease the friction and we could allow that box to move further. So we're learning all sorts of things between this relationship that exists between potential energy and kinetic energy. Now let's explore something else, height, and position in a system. Let's predict the effect of height, and, and we could call that position, in relation to potential energy.
If our ramp was this high, we could maybe see that the box slid down off the ramp and stopped there. If we increase the height of our, our ramp, so we made our ramp higher and we moved the box to the top of the higher ramp, we would possibly be able to shift the box further to position Y. So an increase in height is going to bring about an increase in potential energy, which is going to transfer into an increase in kinetic energy. Are you getting this? If we made our table lower and the box fell off, it would have less potential energy. If we made our table higher and put the box on top of it, we would increase the potential energy of our system. If you want to nail this or hammer this nail in and you only lift your hammer up a short distance, you will have that amount of potential energy to drive the kinetic energy and push that nail into the wood. But what would happen if you lifted your hammer up even higher? You would increase the potential energy. So going back to springs, we can see that the elasticity of the spring, the mass of the box, and friction all affect this energy transfer. And now we've learned that height or position, and we're talking about height above the ground, that is going to affect the amount of energy that is available to the system. If the objects had greater mass, how would that affect their potential energy? So we know that if we took this ramp up higher, but we made it a bigger box, that would affect where the box stopped because the greater the box, the further it's going to shoot off this ramp. Here, if we made our box bigger, and even if we built it up higher, it's going to have greater potential energy and in the same way, greater kinetic energy as well. What if instead of this little hammer, we used a big mallet and we increased the mass of the hammer, we will increase the kinetic energy. If we increase the mass and the height, we're going to increase that kinetic energy even more. So I want you to see that potential energy and kinetic energy are totally related to each other and we can do things to the system to increase our potential energy, which is usually going to cause an increase in the kinetic energy. We can do things to the object that is being moved. We can increase or decrease its mass and we can see that the result of the potential energy into kinetic energy is also going to change. So let's summarize what we've learned. Springs have what we call elastic potential energy when they are compressed or squashed or stretched. And the more an object is stretched, the more energy it has in its elastic potential energy store. Objects also have something called gravitational potential energy that is dependent on their position, in other words, their height and their mass. The greater the mass and the height of the object, the more potential energy is stored. So I'd like you to play around with these ideas by flicking matchboxes or hitting them with elastic bands and seeing if you can change the distance that a matchbox moves depending on how far you stretch back the elastic, how heavy you make the matchbox, 
dropping it down a slope that you make with your ruler, all sorts of little practical ideas to actually experience this in practice. And that's it for today. Goodbye, grade sevens. Thank <laughs> you.